So if you um, haven't been with us in this collection called Ship Happens, um, today I'm preaching the battleship. Again, everybody say the battleship. battleship. Yeah, one of my, we have several values at Clawson. Our values is what have determined who we are. Let me give you a few of them. Uh, so we have a value called the Spirit takes the lead. In other words, we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, or we allow the Holy Spirit to do, there's gifts of the Holy Spirit to, we allow the gifts of the Holy Spirit to move and, and Him to direct the service. And if He doesn't want us to preach and He wants to just have a massive move, we, we want that. We want whatever the Spirit of God wants. How many of you are thankful for that value? One of the values, my favorite of all of our values is this value that says we are dangerously authentic. In other words, here's what we believe at Clawson. We believe there's not a such thing as like a cookie cutter looking style Christian, but that God saves cowboys so that they can reach cowboys. He saves people with money so that they can reach people like them with money. He saves golfers so that they can reach golfers because I could never reach golfers. He saves punk rockers so that we can reach people that are like us. God saves people that ride motorcycles to reach people. What he doesn't want you to do is he doesn't want you to change who you are to be this cookie cutter Christian. He wants to take who you are and use you to reach people like you. And so at Clawson, we say we're dangerously authentic because God, we believe that God wants you to be you to reach people like you. Somebody say amen. But then another one of my favorite values, and it's kind of the value that I'm talking about today. We have this value that says at Clawson, our church is a battleship not a cruise ship. Now, if you're new to Clawson or the Clawson family, I, I want to kind of elaborate. What does that mean? Our church is a battleship, not a cruise ship. I just spent 13 days on a cruise ship. And, uh, and let, me, let me give you kind of the difference between a battleship and a cruise ship. On a cruise ship, the staff's job, the people's job is to serve you and to please you. And your life is about having no worries and you're on vacation. So just take it easy. And the better that we treat you, the happier you're going to be, the more comfortable you're going to be. And, and the more that you're going to tip, uh, that, that's cruise ship life. Anybody ever been on a cruise ship? Okay, that is their goal. And, and why I say our church is a battleship, not a cruise ship, is because I think there's this temptation. I'm not calling out anyone. The church, I love the body of Christ. But I think there's this tem- temptation in the church world to set your church up like a cruise ship. Like, we're going to bring people in and we're just going to kiss their butts. We're, we're going we're gonna to take better care of their, the, the, of their kids than the rest of the churches are. And we're going to have the most comfortable seats so when they sit down, they don't have to move. And we're, we're just going to do our best to please them and make them the most comfortable and make sure that they, they love it so that maybe th- they'll start throwing a little bit of cash our way. Ooh, it got real quiet. I, I believe there is this temptation to, 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 and some of you may be sitting there thinking, well, is that such a bad thing? Yes. Yes, it is such a bad thing. Why? Because the last thing that God wants you to do is to come to sit down and get comfortable and leave and not be trained to be in the army of Jesus Christ. And so if that is how we're setting up our church to make you comfortable and to not change your life and to not train you for the army, we're doing something wrong. So what should the church be doing? The church, it should, you should be uncomfortable in church. Dang it. Nobody likes that, do we? The Holy Spirit of God should be challenging you while the preaching's going on. You, you, You should be challenged. You should be training. It should be life transformational. And if my life is not changing based off of me going to church, there's something wrong in the church. And so we say this all the time. Our church is a battleship. Why? Because we believe in training disciples of Jesus Christ. We believe that that's what makes God happy. Amen? Amen. So in this collection, Ship Happens, uh, there's a lot of ship that's been happening at Clawson. Worship uh, that's been taking place. Um, Discipleship that's been taking place. Leadership that's been taking place. And what I want to talk about today is as those things are happening, as we are putting, listen to me, as we are putting what we are being trained to do into action, the church becomes a battleship with armies of people that are ready to do the will of God, not just sit and chill. Amen? Amen? So today is going to be a very different type of Sunday. Today, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to, I say we're a battleship. Today, we're going to become a battleship. 
Today, we're going to put into action the last three messages that have been preached. So I'm going to recap each of those messages, and then we're going to put into action this morning. Here's, here's kind of, I heard, I hear my kids say this all the time, or other kids say this all the time. What's the move? Hey, what's the move, bro? What's that mean, y'all? What are we doing? Well, what are we doing? That's what it means. What are we doing? Like, what's the move? Where are we going? We're going to eat? You know, what's the move? Yeah. Do I look cool when I say that? <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Luke. I appreciate it. Luke was the only one. He like, yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, so, so here's the thing. There is going to be movement today. Oh, I like it. There's going to be movement today. Here's what I've been praying, y'all. I'm about to talk about worship, and I'm praying that warfare is about to take place in this place when we talk about worship. I'm about to take, talk about discipleship, and then I'm going to make you have some discipleship in your life today. A little bit uncomfortable. Everybody ready? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Okay, what's the move? Turn to your neighbor and tell them what's the move. All right, let's go back to week one. Week one was that worship happens at Clawson. Now, the move that I'm praying for us to see in just a minute take place, the action that I am hoping and praying is... Uh, um, is that as we go into worship, warfare is going to happen and that people's chains are going to be dropped off, that addiction is going to fall off, that warfare is going to take place and that victories are going to take place in just a minute. Here's what uh, Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews in chapter 12 and verse 28, it says this. Y'all, I'm so excited. Sometimes when I get excited, I talk fast and I'm just going to go ahead and apologize. Just stay with me, okay? Or at least try to stay with me. Okay. It says, since we are receiving, listen to this, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable. Everybody say, yeah. Yeah. We are receiving. What does that mean? Here's what it means. Warfare is taking place and you are a part of the ones that win. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. I love that. Hey, I need you to understand something today. When we worship, when worship is taking place, warfare is happening in the spirit. Now, we see this all in Scripture, and, and, and we talked about it. I talked about it in, when, I, when we preached about this a couple of weeks ago, but warfare is taking place. When, when they were worshiping, the walls of Jericho came down as they screamed out, and they were obedient to God because real worship is being obedient to God. Amen? Amen. Giving your body as a sacrifice to God. When they, were, when, when they were worshiping him, Jericho's walls come tumbling down. God literally wins full-blown ba- battles and victories for his people as they worshiped him. Somebody say, that's cool. At Clawson, y'all, we have experienced victory after victory after victory. Miracle night is in two and a half weeks, November the 10th. That night, there will be miracles. Come on, y'all, there will be miracles that will take place that night. People will be set free. People will get saved. Why? Because as we are worshiping and we are doing it in spirit and in truth, as we are giving our all, God comes in and warfare happens and victories take place. That's about to happen today. A couple of years ago, we got a prophetic word. I guess it was more like four years ago, we got a prophetic word. The word was this, that the next battle that we face will be won in worship. And I love that because I love worship. I could sit here and I could tell you over the last few years, victory after victory after victory after victory after victory of things that God has done and, excuse me, in our worship time. But what I wanted to do is I wanted you to hear from somebody that very recently was going through a super, super hard time, uh, not doing right, you know, very good in, in his mind. And then through a time of worship, God just come in and won the victory for him. And so would you give it up for Pastor Christian as he comes and shares his testimony? What's up, everybody? I'm Christian. I'm a recovering, long-winded preacher, so I'm going to try to get through this really fast, okay? I don't want to take up too much of your time. But I have something, a story that Josh asked me to share that I believe um, is very powerful, and I think it's for this season for so many. I was walking, so uh, we said earlier, you know, I got uh, hired to be the youth pastor about eight months ago. I believe God called me into it, and God has blessed it so tremendously. Amen, youth. Y'all make some noise. God has been doing some incredible things, like... Like, we've been walking through this season of growth and and transformation, and the Spirit of God's been pouring out in almost every service, and we're seeing kids prophesy, and we're seeing young people get other young people to church and give them Bible studies, and they're giving their life to Christ. We're watching atheists walk into these church services and just start weeping in the middle of the preaching and then come down, lay down, and give their life to Christ. God's been moving, okay? 
But the thing is, is, and, and for those of you who know me, I just want to say, like, if there was a scale for extrovert, I am on the highest part of that scale. Like, if there, whatever the highest number is, I'm one above that. Like, I am an extroverted person. So I am eating this up. I don't care if there's 500 people in a room that can occupy 220. I'm loving it, okay, every moment of it. So that being said, God's moving. I love that. Growth, I love it. All these things, man. God, it's like every, God's using me. God's using everyone around me. God's doing all this stuff. But most of you don't know that in the middle of that, I was walking through this depression. Like legit, I don't know how to explain it to you. Like it would be not be there in the middle of service, but I would walk out and literally I would, I prayed over a, a fellow over here and God healed him instantaneously in one service. And that same night on the way home, I'm having doubts on whether or not God exists or not. I, I, it's like some of y'all, like, how's that even possible? I don't know how it's possible, but it happened to me, okay? Here's what I'm telling you. In the middle of all of that, it was like a thought would come in or a challenge I would face or, you know, some little discrepancy would happen in the way things work. And like, it just started adding all of this weight to me. And I don't know, I don't know if any of you, in fact, I know that some of you know what I'm talking about. Like, just how can God be moving around me so powerfully? How can I see God doing all these wonderful things? How is it that I know all of this truth and I'm in the middle of God's work, but I feel terrible? Like it got to the point where I didn't even want to come talk to people in church. Like that is, the, that is not me, okay? Like there was a point where I didn't even recognize myself. Like the way this is not, like I've never felt this way. I've never felt so much opposition. I've never felt so, like I didn't even recognize myself. And let me try to narrow this down. <laughs> It was confusing. It was challenging. I was frustrated. I think I laid on Josh's couch twice and talked about quitting because it just was unbearable. And what I started looking around and recognizing was that so many people who had been on the front lines of the work of God were facing the same thing. So many of the youth that, youth that God were using to do the work were feeling exactly like I was. So many people that come up here to the front and God uses were feeling the exact same way and I was beginning to recognize it because I saw it in myself. And to, to sum it up, God gives me and, and a few others in the youth leadership a, a series on worship. And I'm still feeling the same way all the while and I'm driving, I'm pushing, I'm pressing, I'm doing God's work. I'm not letting most people see what's happening in me but uh, it's getting really, really, really hard to deal with. And in the middle of God giving me this revelation uh, to preach to the youth about worship, I was standing in uh, having a little prayer meeting of my own, and I was discovering this truth in the scripture about how God wins battles in worship, and that was the name of the message. And God reminds me, uh, that it comes to my memory, this prophetic word that went out over the church that our next battle would be one in worship. And it's like, you know, the light bulb moment where it's like, I, I know the word, like I know this is a reality, like I know all the truth behind it. But like, for some reason, that just lit my faith on fire when I, and it's like it clicked, like this is it. Like all these people that I'm seeing go through this and, and myself and like, that's why God led all this up to this moment. That word is for right now. And look, I'm not being dramatic. I'm not telling you a story to get a rise out of you. I'm telling you the absolute 100% truth. When it clicked, that, that word was for this season, for me, it all came off at once. Like, I couldn't breathe before this. And, like, I just took this di big, deep breath, and I was like, oh, my God, I feel like myself again. Like, I'm like, I'm having a whole praise break, and there ain't nobody in there. I'm like, yes! Like, I can breathe again. Like, I can see again. I have faith again. I know what it feels like to have faith in God's work again. And here's what I want to say, and I'm going to pass it back to Josh before I preach this whole point for him. <laughs> I feel like there are so many people in this room, and you have no idea why you feel the way you feel. And you're, you're, you're involved in worship. But listen, there was something that happened to me when I realized, wait a second. It's all in worship. I'm doing everything right. But my breakthrough is in worship. I just want to speak to somebody today. If you wonder, can you feel the way you used to feel when you first got saved again? Yes, you can. Hey, that hit for somebody. I really feel that right now. You've been wondering if it's even possible to feel that way again. I'm telling you from my testimony, in one moment in worship, it all came back and I can breathe and smile and love and live for God again like I used to. So I just want to encourage somebody. I'm closing out. I'm walking away. I'm getting away from you, okay? 
Y'all are riling me up. I got to get away. Right here, right now, today, close your eyes, forget about all the problems, and remember, your next battle will be won in worship, okay? Stand with me. Stand with me, stand with me, stand with me. You say that wasn't much of a message. Well, we ain't done. But we're about to win some battles in worship. Hey, would you close your eyes? Altar team, come on. Come to the front. Altar team, come to the front. Here's what we're going to do. I'm not saying you have to come and get prayer. This thing's about worship. Listen, the moment that the shift happened in Christian was whenever he took that word and said, this word is for me right now. This word is for me right now. For some of you, what you need to do is you need to say, that word is for me and it's for right now. It's not for tomorrow, it's not for yesterday, it's for right now, that God wants to free me. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you are here and Pastor Christian was speaking and you were thinking, that's what I want. If he was speaking and you were thinking, that's what I need. If he was speaking and you were thinking, that's what I'm having trouble with. I can't break through, I can't break through, I can't break through. Hey, don't, don't wait. I want you to step out and come to the front right now. Don't come to a prayer partner yet unless you're led, but step out and come. Come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Don't wait. You want freedom? You want things to be broken off of you? You want to go back and find yourself? You want to remember what it's like to love Jesus like you loved him at first? All right, now here's what we're going to do. If you're here, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, y'all. Fill up the front, fill up the front, fill up the front. Squeeze in. Yeah. Anybody believe God's about to move? Uh Uh-huh. Here's what I want. If God has been, if God has been given you right now, you're in a season of victory. If you're in a season of victory and you're just hyped, seeing what's going on right now, you are hyped, you are pumped. I want you surrounding them during this song. I want you to surround, come on, would you step out? And right now you're just in the season of excitement. You're seeing God move victory after victory. I want you surrounding them. And here's what we're going to do. We're about to have a time. Well, I want, if, if you came up to the front, and you're receiving the word that Pastor Christian gave right now, I just want you to lift your hands and I want you to say, my time is right now. Come on, say it together. My time is right now. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for every single person that has come up. God, we're about to have some warfare. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, as we sing this song, as we give you our worship, that you move in a mighty and a powerful way. Altar team, if you don't have someone that comes to you and you feel the Holy Spirit lead you to go to them or anyone in the church family, if you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to go and pray for someone, pray something specifically over them during this song, would you step out and come? Come on. Warfare happens in worship. We're about to worship and God's about to move. Here we go. Would you lift your hands and sing this? All my words fall short. All my words fall short. I've got just one you. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. Every song must end, and you never. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing left for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah. Got just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. So that I have is a highway.
shall be lift up your soul You got a light inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on now hey. Come on my soul Now don't you get shy on me Lift up your soul Cause you got a light inside Heavenly Father, I just come to you right now. I just thank you. God, I just thank you. Father, I, I feel like burdens have been lifted. Father, I feel like freedom is taking place. Lord, I can, I can feel a shift spiritually, God, and I thank you right now. Come on, go do it. If you're thankful for the Lord, would you just lift your hands and tell him thank you? Yes. Worship is warfare. Worship is warfare. And you need to remember that. Because a lot of times we allow Satan to defeat us because he can take away our worship. And instead of, instead of worshiping in the trials and in the, in the, uh, the tribulations, instead of worshiping, I, I want to read you. It just hit me. One of my favorite scriptures doesn't make sense to me and it's super weird. And here's what it says, if I can find it quickly. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. A lot of times, though, we forget to worship, we forget the joy, we forget to consider it an opportunity for great joy, but when troubles come our way, we become, we, we cower down and we forget and we get out of that. Just like Christian said, I completely forgot who I was. Consider it an opportunity for great joy, for you know that when your faith is being tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, I pray that we would we would receive endurance. I pray that today you would stir something up inside of your church that when we got troubles coming, when circumstances is happening, when all hell seems like it's coming against us, Father, that we would go, this is an opportunity for me to worship God. This is an opportunity for me to give it to God. This is an opportunity for me to have joy knowing that he's got everything under control. Woo! Can we sing that one more time? Come on, my soul. Heavenly Father, give us freedom. Help us walk in freedom. God, help us to help this to be training, not just for today, but God, as we go out to become the disciples that you've called us to be, help this to be training, God, to, that, that, that we turn to you in worship and that we see victory after victory after victory in our warfare and in our worship. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, I want you to have a seat real quick. I'm not done preaching. If you want to stay seated at the front, you can do that too. I don't care. I am going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to change up how, what I was going to do. Because that went a little bit longer, which I love it. I want it to go as long as God wants it to go. Um, but we're going to talk real quickly about how leadership happens at Clawson and then how we're going to put that training into action and then how discipleship happens at Clawson. And I think I'm going to go leadership first because the discipleship, I think, is how we're going to end the service. So leadership happens at Clawson. Last week, my dad preached about how leadership happens at Clawson. I'm just going to get off of my notes or I'm going to think about that, and I don't want to think about that. Everybody good with that? Okay, nice. So the two things, really, that what, God, what dad talked about last week, leadership happens at Clawson, and the two big things that he talked about is leadership is influence that you have over others, and leadership, godly leadership, looks like servant leaders. Okay, so what I took out of last week, and he talked about good leaders and bad leaders. He talked about godly leaders and not so godly leaders. And then he talked about using your influence. How many dads we got in the room? You got a lot of influence. Moms, not me. You got a lot of influence. How many of you got friends? How many of you work somewhere? Okay, here's what you need to know. You got a lot of influence. You got a lot of influence. And let me tell you something, something that I wanted to tell one of my best friends this week. Your influence for Jesus gets destroyed when you say that you walk according to Jesus and you go to church and you love Jesus and you don't act like it. Destroyed. How can anyone take you seriously when you're living like the devil and saying that you're following Jesus? Gee. Somebody need to hear that. So, so here's what you need to know. Here's, how do we move? What, somebody say, what's the move? Okay, here is what your take home is. Your take home is, number one, I'm giving you two challenges. Number one, servant leadership. I'm asking you, would you find a place to serve? And I'm not just saying, would you find a place to serve? That would give all of y'all a chance to get off. No, no, no. I'm giving you three places. Okay, you ready? Number one, this week, Wednesday night, we have Fall Fest. And we need anyone and everyone. We're, we're serving our whole community through Fall Fest. Everything is free. Claw is huge, like a big carnival area thing back here in the back. And we need people to work. Some of you, I just need you to walk around and talk to people. 
I just need you to walk around and build relationships with people. Why? Because the reason that, you know the reason that I begin to be open to Jesus Christ is because somebody on church grounds walked up to me and said that they liked my lip ring. And then I became friends with them and they led me to Jesus. Listen, there are going to be people that are going to be out there that hate us. But they're bringing their kids and they're coming and you could change somebody's life by using your influence to walk up and say, bro, I like your L.A. cap, man. That's awesome. I'm not a big L.A. fan, but I, I like I like your hair. I wish I had some. Listen, you can transform somebody's life by going and showing them that you care for them. That's what Christianity is all about, is caring for people, loving people enough to not see them go to hell, but show them how to get to heaven. So three chances for you to serve. Number one, if you come serve at Fall Fest. Jess, where are you at? Jess, uh, would you stand up so everybody can see you? Jessica's going to be at, in the back of the foyer right after service. Uh, do we have that QR code? Can we put that QR code up? If you're interested in serving and you haven't signed up, you can do one of two things. If you have your phone and you want to do the QR code and sign up, you can do it that way. Or Jessica's going to be in the foyer. If you're interested in serving, listen, we want everybody to serve. You say, well, I'm not going to be doing anything. You could change someone's life by having one conversation with them. Okay, so serving, that's one. Number two, some of you say, eh, that's not really a thing for me. We're going to be building bicycles for a thousand bicycles for kids for Christmas. I need your help. December the 8th, write this down in your calendar. December the 8th, we're gonna set up our gym like a warehouse and we're gonna be building 1,000 bicycles from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. that day. We could use your help. It doesn't matter how old you are, you just have to be like 10. So we can use 10 year olds that day. You know why? Because this is how it goes. You have a table right here and you have two people at the table. You have people that are bringing boxes of bicycles and piling them right there. You have somebody opening the boxes and putting them on the tables. You have people putting together the bicycles. They drop the bicycle. A kid jumps on the bicycle and takes off riding to make sure it functions correctly. And then if it doesn't function correctly, they bring it right back to the table. If it does, they take it and pile it with the good bicycles. And so listen, we need everybody. But do you know how many people it's gonna to take to put together a thousand bicycles? A lot. So there's a place for you to serve. December the, oh snap, 8th and then 11th, that Wednesday night, we're going to put together bicycles too. So if you, I don't think we're going to get them all done on the 8th. So if you say, you know what, I want to serve. I want to serve my church. I want to serve my community. Come that day. Come that day and, and build bicycles. Come this week for Fall Fest. Come that day and build bicycles. December the 15th, we are going to be giving those bicycles away. And we would love for all the help that you can have. December the 15th, write that on your calendar and we'll have a sign up time later on. Um, and then lastly, how can you, so that is the move for servanthood. Now what's the move for influence? This one's hard, y'all. I'm asking you to do one of my favorite things. I kind of trained myself to do. So um, I have lots of tattoos. Um, I like tattoos and tons of people out in the world that have tattoos, they're not serving Jesus right now. And so one of my favorite things to do is to go up, especially if I have more tattoos than them, because then they usually like, they're like, well, tell me about yours. And, and, uh, and so I like to start conversations with people that have lots of tattoos or lots of piercings. Why? Because if I say, I, if I go up as a pastor, usually they don't have any interest in talking to me. But if I go up like this, they love to talk to me. And then we have full-blown conversations and then they're like, man, what kind of church are you with? Like, what the? Uh, and, so, and so we get this full. So what am I saying? I'm saying God's given you a place to have influence. I'm asking you, would you allow God to use your influence at work? Would you allow God to use your influence at home? Would you allow God to use your influence wherever you go to, to build relationships with people? so that you can eventually lead them to Jesus. That's what godly leadership looks like. So what's the move in worship is that we're gonna to continue to worship and we're gonna to continue to see victory. What's the move in leadership is that we're going, to, um, we're going to use our influence and we're gonna serve. How many of you will do that? Hey, can I pray for you? Keep your hands up. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would lead us as we go out to use our influence and as we go out to serve our community and serve our church, I pray that you would lead us and guide us, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Anybody said? Okay, I got one more and I'll try to be super quick. Discipleship happens at Clawson. Hey, somebody tell me what's discipleship? Somebody. 
becoming more like Jesus. If I become more like Jesus tomorrow than I was today, that then there is some form of discipleship that's taking place in me. Okay, hey, listen, I'm about to throw out some. Disciples is the goal. Discipleship is the goal. Jesus said, uh, Matthew 28, 19, here's what he said. Therefore, go and make, let's try it again. Therefore, go and make of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples all of the things that I have commanded you and be sure of this. I am with you always until the end of the age. The goal is making disciples. Now stay with me. The goal is what? So the goal is not for me to preach some beautiful message and make you feel like you're going to hell to get you to the front, right? The goal is not for us to sing these beautiful songs. The goal is not us entertaining. The goal is, the goal is not even for you to be a biblical scholar because if it was biblical scholars, Jesus would have went and called Pharisee after Sadducee after Pharisee after Sadducee. No, no, no. Listen, the goal is for us to make disciples. What's a disciple do? Man, what a great question. What's a disciple do? They become more like Jesus and they step into whatever it is that Jesus is calling them to do because they've built a relationship with Jesus and he's the one that's leading and guiding their life. That's what a disciple does. They discover him. They, they get connected into his body. They mature as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, how do we make disciples? This is where we see the move and this is how we're gonna end the service. How do we make disciples? Disciples, it's simple. We build relationships with people. Pastor Christian, he, gosh, he did such a good job, didn't he? Here's what, he, Pastor Christian, he didn't use this in his, in his thing, but all three of the pastors that spoke to you over the last three weeks, all three of us are disciples because of relationships that we had with people that were more like Jesus that helped us become disciples. I, I want you to allow that to sink in. Because Jesus doesn't want you to stay where you're at. He wants you to grow. But he doesn't just want you to grow. He wants you to grow so that you can reach back and grab a hold of people that are behind and where you were and help them grow. And there should be, here's what it should look like. It should look like Josh getting a relationship with someone that's closer to Jesus than Josh and they're pulling Josh to move forward and Josh is grabbing a hold of Christian and pulling Christian forward and Christian is pulling a hold of Luke and pulling Luke forward and Luke is grabbing a hold of Zane and pulling Zane forward. And here's what it should look like. All of us should be building relationships. I love what Christian said. He said, you should have a relationship with Jesus. Yes, but everybody, so many people are like, man, me and Jesus, we got our own thing going on. No, you don't. That's bull crap. That is a lie from Satan is what that is. That's true. How do I know that? Because if you think that, you don't know anything about Jesus or the church. He placed us in the church. Why? So that we could take people, they could strengthen us as iron sharpens iron and we could strengthen them. And we are all, this is like this circle of life of discipleship. The more that I grow, the more people I'm grabbing behind me, the more that they are growing. And as Bear is growing, he's got people at work that he's influencing and using. As Jeremy is growing, he's got people at work. He says, that's what it should look like. But the only way that that happens is if we are building relationships with each other, and then we're building relationships outside of the church. So, everybody say, what's the move? Discipleship's about to happen right now, and we're about to close out the service with this. And here's how it's gonna go. Everyone is about to build a relationship. Now, some of you, some of you freaking out right now, I got social anxiety, I'm an introvert, uh, and I'm not downplaying that. Here's what I'm saying. You don't have to move. You don't have to move. I'm gonna send somebody else to you, okay? So here's what we're about to do. Everyone is gonna spend four minutes and I want you to build a relationship with someone that either you don't know or someone that you don't know well, okay? Or couples, if you're more comfortable going together to another couple, go to another couple and y'all can build a relationship together. That could be cool too. But I want to form relationships today. And here's what you're gonna learn. Can we put these things on the screen? Here's what you're gonna learn. What's their name? How long have they been attending Clawson? What brought them to church here? And then learn something fun about them. Something fun about me, I love skydiving. I love tattoos. I hate the fact that I don't have hair. I mean, there's, that's why I wear a hat. Some of y'all like, some people sometimes come in and judge the hat. Well, it's self-esteem issues. I'm sorry, I like the hat because then nobody looks at the head. Just, just don't judge. I won't judge you, you don't judge me. Uh, but here, here, here's what I need, okay? In just a minute, I'm gonna say go. And here's your options. 
And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping everybody do this. This could be great for our church family. Everybody do this. Four minutes. Find this section. Find somebody in your section. This section. Find somebody in your section. Find somebody in your section and learn their name. You can find someone that you know, you just can't know them well. Don't find your wife. Well, I don't know her well. Well, you, you work on that at home. Okay? That's, uh-uh. We're not doing that. Okay. Name, how long they've come to Clawson, what brought them to church, something fun about them. I'm going to pray for you guys. And then how many of you will do this with me? Okay. Thank you. Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you would help us to be the battleship that you've called us to be. Father, I pray right now that you would help us to worship through every trial, through every issue, through every circumstance. I pray that you would help us to lead using our influence and serve your church, your body in this community. And I pray that you would help us to find people to help us draw closer to Jesus and to help draw others closer to Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. All right, go, 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 go find somebody, build relationships. Four minutes right now.